So once uh, you have the pollination completed, the pollen grains from flower mature anther travels by different pollinating agents and reaches the surface of the stigma. Now if the stigma is matured, then it will allow the pollen grain to sit on it and then germinate. Now the question is whether we allow all different sorts of pollens because in the nature, in atmosphere, we can have pollen from different uh, plant species and typically we should not allow all the plant species, uh, the pollen from all the different plant species to germinate because it ideally should be from the same plant species, not from some other species. Now, question is, how does the, uh, the plants are uh, equipped to prevent the pollen grain from a different plant species to, you know, uh, germinate and fertilize the egg in the ovule? The process of determination whether a particular pollen grain sitting on the pollen, uh, you know, on the stigma should be allowed to germinate or not depends on the pollen pistil interactions. Suppose there are these 5 or 10 pollen grains sitting on the stigma and remain, uh, imagine that this stigma is matured. In that case, we have to determine, the plant has to determine whether it will allow all these 5 or 10 or 6, for example in this picture 6 are there, whether it should allow all the 6 of them to germinate or whether it will decide what to allow and what not to allow. So all of these events that is starting from the deposition of the pollen grain on the stigma surface, right, all the way to all the way till the pollen tube enters the ovule, these entire processes are together referred to as the pollen crystal interactions. Now, how does the plant determine whether something is its own or not? The pollen, uh, the pollen tube, the pollen grain that is allowed to develop the pollen tube they are called compatible pollen grains okay so which is from its own species from its own plant then plant species then it is called compatible pollen whether the remaining are called the non-compatible pollen so what it should do it should basically allow the compatible pollen to develop the pollen tube and the non-compatible pollen to prevent the germination Right. It may not be able to prevent the germination, but it definitely, definitely should not allow the growth of the pollen tube to a greater extent. So this is what you have to keep in mind. So all the compatible pollen grains are allowed to develop the pollen tube and reach all the way to the embryo sac, whereas the remaining should not be allowed, should not be allowed to grow. Now the question is how does it perform that? So here what happens is when once uh, the stigma receives the pollen grain, there is a continuous uh, chemical talk. That is, there is continuous interaction between the pollen grain and the stigma surface. And then the based on this exchange of chemicals, the stigma decides, the plant decides whether the pollen grain is its own or not, whether the pollen grain is compatible or not. And if it is compatible, then the next processes are allowed, that is pollen tube is allowed to germinate. Otherwise, the pollen tube is not allowed to germinate. So that is the basic idea of pollen crystal interaction at the very beginning. Now, what happens once you have the pollen tube that is going to grow? Now, once the pollen tube is growing, it is going to grow all the way to the ovule. Now, we all know that in the ovule, we have the uh, embryo sac, that is a female gametophyte and it has to enter the female gametophyte. Now, here the synergids play a very important role. Okay, now why it is important? Remember, the synergids are present on the micropylar end. Okay, now they, the micropylar end contains the synergids and the synergids consist of the uh, filiform apparatus, the thickenings called the filiform apparatus. Now the filiform apparatus guides the entry of the pollen tube into the synergids, that is into the female gametophyte. And once it is in the female gametophyte, sorry, uh, in the huh, in the female gametophyte, that is inside the synergids, 
slowly it is going to release the two male gametes remember in 60% of the angiosperms the pollen is released in a two celled condition remember two celled condition that is we have one vegetative cell and we have one generative cell now the vegetative cell help the plant help the plant or the pollen grains to produce the pollen tube that is also called a tube cell whereas the generative cell divides into two male gamete it divides into two male gamete now this two male gamete what they do is they actually uh, enter into the embryo sac and one fuses with the egg cell whereas the second one fuses with the central cell we'll talk about the process but main you have to understand is the pollen tube once it enters it is going to once the pollen tube is uh, entering the female gametophyte it is going to release the two male gametes remember so this is this is where you have the filiform apparatus this is where it is entering and these are the two male gametes that are released into the synergies at the beginning and from the synergies as you can see we have one uh, male gamete at this particular point and we have the second male gamete at this particular point now remember one of this is going to fuse with the polar nu polar nuclei two polar nuclei and the other one is fused with the egg cell so as you can see by then what is going to hap happen is the synergies are going to disintegrate once the male gametes are discharged that is the sperm cells are discharged then these synergies actually they disintegrates so this is what we have to understand with regard to the pollen pistil interactions now as you can see here these are the electron micrograph of the pollen grain germinating on the stigma and this is definitely the pollen tube that is going to go through the style so this is the entire concept you have to understand that how the compatibility of the pollen is going to be determined that is by the chemical talk or exchange of chemicals between the stigma and the pollen grains and if it is compatible they are allowed to germinate if it is not compatible they are not allowed to germinate once the pollen tube is growing in the pollen we know most of the cases have two cells one is called generative cell one is called vegetative cells the generative cell divides into two by mitosis giving rise to two male gametes and these two male gametes or the sperm cells then enter and the pollen tube enters to the uh, filiform apparatus guided by filiform apparatus into synergies release the two male gametes and then the fertilization events begins